Hi Gemini, welcome to Starkeology Tarot. I am Desi and I will be your Starkeologist today. Um, I am very excited to deliver to you um, a message straight from source, straight from spirit, um, to help give you insight um, and helpful tools as you move into the month of May. I, my intention here is to deliver a message that is most aligned with your highest self, your highest good, your highest path. And there will be likely messages in here that resonate with you and some that don't, that's okay. The ones that resonate with you are the ones that are meant for you and the ones that don't are meant for someone else. So don't panic. <laughs> um, let's start. Gemini, if I remember correctly, your last month um, ended with possibly a, a, a transformational ending of sorts. Um, and you were also processing a lot of sorrow and pain last month. We had those um, double three of swords that appeared. A lot of um, matters of the heart that you were sorting through. And hopefully there was some some sort of ending or alchemization, al alchemization of, um, of that pain and sorrow that you've been feeling a lot of. Um, this is very, what I'm seeing in this spread, it's very clear that you have, you're laying down the groundwork for a new beginning now. Um, we have the Page of Swords, um, which came out with Oh no, not that way. <laughs> the Three of Wands. Um, which tells me that there is a sort of um, melding of earth energy and air energy that's in this Page of Swords. Um, Page of Swords is like saying earth of air um, that needs to be in balance. There's some sort of idea, decision, uh, agreement that you are in the process of crafting or making and it would it's calling out to be manifested in your real world um it only exists maybe here and in order for you to actually move into the future that you are envisioning you're doing you have the opportunity for a lot of visualization right now with this three of wands like looking through this window um into the future of what your life could be and it's easier to do that when you actually start marrying action with thought. The fact that this though, I think we gotta address this, the fact that this popped out as I was shuffling Eight of Swords tells me that's a little bit of an opposing energy you might be facing early this month. Um, so whatever, whatever you feel called to do, the thing that you've been thinking about a lot doing, thinking of starting, whatever it is, that you are translating from your mind to your world right now, to your physical experience, that new idea you wanna act on, that new project you wanna start, um, that contract you wanna begin, that new job you wanna begin, whatever that is, there's also a mental component, a belief or um, a, f a, a fear-based thought that is kind of holding you back and keeping you trapped making you feel trapped, making you feel powerless, despite the fact that you have so much ahead of you. You have whatever you want this to be is right ahead of you. Um, you have this freedom before you and yet you don't feel free. You're not allowing yourself to feel free to act on that desire, wand energy, that's fire, or that thought, that sword, that page of swords. Um, 
this eight of swords is it's you're really having a, a kind of internal intellectual battle with yourself right now where you are you have a choice to either let yourself be remain powerless because you believe you're powerless or realize that there's actually no one holding you here there's no cap door here um you you can take the blindfold off yourself you can choose to reintegrate yourself into some community you don't have to be as isolated as you are mentally that's another aspect of the eight of swords that appears when we feel like we are being forced to conform to something that does not resonate with us and so maybe that could be this battle too is that there's external forces that are making you feel like you need to conform to whatever is conventional whatever is the norm but you have this deep-seated desire and this idea uh, that that directly opposes this so it's a choice between conforming versus branching out um pioneering your own new land and and creating a, a, be a beginning for just yourself it's hard to create our own beginnings within someone else's existing structure and often people what gives people bravery what gives individuals bravery and courage to go off and do their own thing is this absolute feeling of powerlessness um, and restriction that ends up mounting t to such a great degree that it makes life unlivable it makes um it makes like life feel like a prison so it could be that either this is holding this is just something that you are creating for yourself this mental um these thought patterns these negative thought patterns that you are a prisoner to and you are your own you're also jailkeeper you are creating these thoughts you are perpetuating these thoughts for yourself and it's your job it's like this inner battle that you are having this mental battle for you to break out of this so that you can start anew act on the um the thing that excites you and makes you feel fearless that idea that that decision that is coming from a fearless light-filled place or it could also be that this is something that is not coming from you this is a structure in which you just don't fit you don't you you it is not natural for you to conform into it and also you don't want to conform into it um and so this this possibility is calling to you because and really just just that that feeling these these dark feelings might be um adding up becoming bigger and bigger to the point that you know it's like a um steam uh what is that called a, a steamer a steam a pressure cooker <laughs> pressure cooker where you know the steam is building up those feelings are building up and it's just going to explode it's going to just explode and push you into this and you might start that without even recognizing who you are or where where that sudden like determination and power came from um it's almost like you might find yourself acting in a way that makes you feel outside of yourself like you're watching yourself go through these actions and you're like oh my god i can't believe i just did that but it happened without without even without much thought <laughs> without much um much careful conscientious like how am i gonna strate tra strategizing and like going about how you're gonna go about doing this um and the reason why i say that too is because this three of wands this is so this is a wands card this is very much aligned with your soul purpose with your desire the fire in you and fire is uncontrollable at times we can contain it we've we have found a way to harness fire in our stoves and in um our fireplaces of course like 
we contain fire all the time, but there are also so many times where fire is completely uncontainable. Um, and it can get it can get out of our control rather quickly. The same goes for our desire. When our desire is burning and burning and burning and we are not doing anything to stoke that fire, to nurture it, it can take over us. And I don't think this is a bad thing in this case. This visualization of your future that you are doing right now is pushing you to, to take action, to bring action to the desire and the thoughts that you have. It is maybe exactly what you need in order to make, a, make positive changes, make new beginnings in your life. Um, the thing to remember with the Three of Wands is that while you've probably had continued support from others, you have good friends, you have parents, you have uh, a community that's really making, you know, completing all sides of this triangle. It's, it's, it's strong, it's stable. Um, you're really the only one who can envision your own future. No one else can do that for you. No one else can see the potential for you that you can. And we often forget this because we also, no one else can, it's also true that no one else can see the shadow that we can for ourselves. No one else can see the depths of our own despair when we get into those worry spirals of thinking how bad things could possibly be for us. But that goes both ways. That's a two-way street. Nobody else also can visualize the depth of magic and abundance and light. That, that possibility, that side of the fork in the road. Only we are able to do that for ourselves because when, when we visualize those things for ourselves, we are the ones who are most invested in that visualization, which means we feel the feelings of that visualization far more deeply than anyone else, anyone else could ever feel that for us. Which is why envisioning your future is so, so crucial to actually stepping into your future. And this is... Um, this is a real opportunity for you right now to move into this phase and away from this phase. This is finite. This is finite. This keeps you finite. This keeps your ideas, these swords, ideas and words, the things that come from your brain, finite. This is infinite. Your future is infinite. And you are in this place looking ahead of you with um, all the potential and possibility in the world. So don't limit that. You don't have to limit what you dream. You should never limit what you dream. Because then you only limit the, pos the actual reality. The action and advice here is really fascinating, especially considering last month all of the, the those two those double three of swords that we had, um, you know, issues of the heart that were coming up. We have the um, the hanged man plus the two of cups. I am seeing that this is. You are isolated right now. You're not just isolated in this way. This is a mental isolation, a mental restriction. But you are also likely restricted and isolated in other ways right now. No surprise that the hanged man came up. But there is a difference between just being isolated and being alone um, versus being in solitude. And solitude has an aspect to it that is that involves self-exploration, self-growth. And the hanged man is offering you that version of being alone. Because in this waiting time, yes, you are sacrificing something. You're sacrificing your movement, your right foot here. Um, in a way you are limited, you feel like you're limiting yourself or you're being limited. But 
There's also enlightenment that comes with this sacrifice and with this waiting. And this is out of your control. The waiting that you are in right now, this is completely out of your control. You cannot force an outcome here. So instead of resisting the waiting, which is just going to create so much more suffering during this time, embrace the, the waiting and see, see things from this upside down angle. Your world is turned upside down right now. That's not necessarily bad. The world is offering you another angle from which you can see it. And that's a gift. If you spend too much time mourning the fact that you're not right side up, then you miss the things you might notice being upside down. This enlightenment, this realization, this, this kind of incubation that is happening for you is allowing for true love and connection to blossom. I think for many of you, this connection, because this is in solitude, and we're, we're focusing on that, that, that waiting, being in that, that waiting place, um, I think that that connection and love is largely about your connection and love for yourself. This is, it's time to be your own partner. It's time to have your own back. It's time to fill your own cup. I mean, it's cliche what we say about, about love, about having, being strong in your love with yourself, your relationship with yourself, um, and how that opens you up to love in relationship with others. But it's cliche because it's true. <laughs> and, and this connection with yourself that you are forging is part of this new beginning for you. It's almost like that love, that trust in yourself that you will act, that you will act on your ideas that you have, that you will act on stepping into your future. You will, you'll see those visions of your future and you won't just abandon them, but you can rely on yourself to pursue them. That is a connection with yourself, a deep connection and trust and love for yourself because by honoring your ideas, by honoring your desires, by honoring your passions, um, there's a real connection with the divine in that. And when we deny those parts of ourselves, we are denying magic in our lives. We are denying divinity. We're also saying, I don't trust myself with this idea. I don't trust myself with this desire. Why was, I, why was this planted in me? It's planted in you for a reason. It's planted in you so that you can bring it about in the world, so that you can make it happen. It's a part that you are playing for this, the collective manifestation of so much good. I also see, though, that for some of you, this is largely about a partnership or a friendship. In this period of waiting, you are becoming closer with someone in your life who's important to you. Or perhaps it's someone that wasn't that important to you before that you just happen to be stuck in this waiting period with, and it is deepening your connection in ways that you never imagined possible. It's like, in regular circumstances, it being right side up, you think, oh, I, my relationship couldn't go this deeply with someone. But being upside down, you're suddenly like, wow, we're actually on the same, now we're seeing things from the same perspective. Now we're on the same wavelength. Now this upside down world is allowing us to connect to each other in a way that we couldn't before. It's deepening your connection, your love, your friendship your romance. This is a real heart opening that is happening, that is coming from this enlightenment with the hanged man. 
So don't be afraid to sacrifice during this time. The advice here is whatever sacrifice you make in this waiting, by, by welcoming the incubation period, by not trying to force an outcome, by not resisting the waiting, not resisting the uncertainty, but embracing it, you will actually open your heart up in ways that will shock you. Your cup will be filled in ways that will shock you. Your level of emotional fulfillment. And I do think, whether this is with someone else or it's just with yourself, regardless, your relationship with yourself, your inner peace, your inner love, the way you depend on yourself to fill up your own cup, all of that will be strengthened and deepened. If you are really able to embrace this period of waiting, see these sacrifices as being for your own greater good, for your own greater enlightenment, welcome the new perspective. If you are able to do that, then what is ahead of you is stunning. <laughs> We've got the Queen of Wands plus the Chariot. This is the second major arcana card here. And what an incredible bookend like two great bookends for this reading beginning of the month page of swords which often means an idea a decision i feel like this is just like the decision just like wait, like waiting or floating around for you in your in your vortex waiting for you to act on it and this is the actual taking action of it this is the decision that is made and you have started traveling in that direction with determination knowing that a victory is ahead of you the chariot is all about um, having a strong will, having determination, and knowing that you will triumph at the end of it. But you allow yourself to be carried on this journey. You allow your strong will to carry you, your determination, your motivation to carry you to the point that you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, I can't believe where I used to be because now I'm a queen. Now I have in my grasp the things that I wanted. I have them. Queen of Wands, remember, this is incredible bookends, starting with the Three of Wands, ending with the Queen of Wands. So there is something that you are envisioning in the future that you are getting full grasp over, full control over, something that you want, something that you've been visualizing in your future, something that you want where you will feel like you suddenly have authority over how you go about getting this thing. Maybe you will have it by the end of May. The Queen of Wands, that's, that's water of fire. So again, too, we have more water energy here along with these two, this Two of Cups. Like this is, um, this is water of fire. The balancing of that desire of that fire in you with the filling of your cup. Um, feeling like and feeling like you were you got those things because you or you got that thing that you wanted you achieved that desire because you really leaned in your in leaned into your intuition your feminine power this isn't there's no masculine power in this there's no um There's, there's really not, not so much structure to how you go about this journey. This journey is led by your heart and by your fire. This is led by your intuition, by your, the, your creative flow, because that is where feminine power comes from, whereas masculine power comes from structure, logic, checking off the list. You know, there's no list to be checked off here. In fact, this is a throwing the list out the window situation and, and really, really harnessing the power of your intuition, honoring your feelings along this journey, letting your feelings, your heart, be your compass as you determine the new directions that you take on this journey. And being fierce in how you protect those new directions, how you protect the decisions that you make on this journey protecting that strong will. You honor your feelings 
by being, by acting on them with a very strong will, by acting on them with determination and, and real fire. This is a marriage between that fiery passion, that strong will, that determination, and your feelings, your heart, your intuition, your, your creative flow, your, femi your divine feminine power. As long as you keep your gaze fixed on this, then your footing will be strong. Then you don't have to second guess the steps that you take because the steps will come, will reveal themselves naturally to you. Kind of what I was talking about before about how you kind of are seeing yourself almost like a fly on the wall, like, oh, that's where I'm, that's what I'm doing. That's shocking. I was no thought in that. I see that with this with this journey for you too. Looking at your actions, looking at the direction you're taking, and just being almost like a, a separate entity outside of yourself, looking at the direction you're going and saying, or looking down at your feet and saying, "Oh, that my feet just went that way. <laughs> I just turned that way. Okay, I, I'm going that way then." Um, that is a real honoring of your intuition and the power of your intuition and trust again self trust there is trust in that there is really a strong deep connection inside of you that is happening right now that is being nurtured this month in this month of may you you'll come out of it with a self trust that is that makes you strong willed that gives you determination, that makes you know so sure your direction and your destination and the fact that you will most definitely reach that destination. You will be triumphant in, in reaching and completing the end of this journey, reaching that destination. This is really beautiful, Gemini. And I think that the biggest thing, your, your only obstacle here is this. Just remember that these things are not the same. This trap, this entrapment, this restriction is not the same thing as waiting and uh, embracing that that waiting that sacrifice that feels challenging but not suffocating this is the thing that's you know that you don't want to conform to something that is keeping your wings clipped something that is making you into something that you don't want to be that isn't aligned with your soul this is is a gift this is a stillness, this is a waiting time, this is an incubation, and if anything, it's just bringing you closer with yourself, with, the, with your higher self, so that you can align with that higher self. It's just a shift in perspective. A shift in perspective is not the same thing as being blindfolded. So really really reflect on that and and make sure that you know the difference between those two things during this month and don't confuse the two because one is will build you up and one will knock you down regardless this journey for you is blessed it is it is destined to be triumphant so if anything gives you courage and gives you a strong will, that should just knowing how it and how it works out. Because victory is what is ahead of you on this journey. So keep marching along, keep doing your thing. Um, you are all beautiful and thank you so much for joining me today um, in this reading. If you liked this reading, please feel free to 
like and subscribe, share it with anyone who, who you think would appreciate it. Um, I literally love you.